one. <laughs> And Co. I'm the manager of repair here at Family Music Centers in Las Vegas and Henderson. I'd like to introduce you to a new video series about preventative maintenance checks and services that can be done at the performer or the music educator level on certain instruments. This week we're going to focus in on the saxophone. One critical thing to keep in mind is that even a well-intentioned repair can go horribly awry if left in the hands of an untrained or unskilled technician. Today we're going to be going over three danger zones on the saxophone. All three of these danger zones uh, are a lot of problems that I see coming into the shop and as a former band director myself I've seen between warm-up area A and B. The three danger zones that we're going to be talking about today are the octave mechanism, our palm keys, and our G-sharp and B-flat regulation arm. A lot of these issues can make the difference between a wonderful performance or a nightmare performance. And we're going to start with our octave mechanism. Has that ever happened to you or have you heard something like that in your band room? The problem in this case is with the octave mechanism, and we're going to discuss that right now. Many of the problems with the octave mechanism really stems predominantly from this octave key that's on the neck. A lot of times this metal will get bent, especially if the musician doesn't loosen up the neck screw, therefore letting it come out a lot easier. A lot of times I see where the neck screw has been tightened not been loosened and the neck has been removed and at that point in time the octave key on top of the neck has been bent. So much to the point to where it stays open and that's why you're going to have that gap. All that the problem is is not really with the octave mechanism but with this actual octave key being bent. The best thing that you can do to, to fix this problem you'll open the octave key put your thumb right in and gently bend down the pad section until it hits. One thing to watch out for is that if you over adjust then, you, then the key won't go up at all. So you want to make little bends at a time until the octave key will go up between high G and high A. When you hit high A, octave key should go up when you hit G, the octave key should go back down. Let's see if this works. The next area of concern when it comes to the saxophone are these palm keys. Many times the performer or the student will, uh, when they set their saxophone down in the case or when they set it down on, on their, the band room floor or football uh, field, these keys usually take a good licking. Uh, the actual mechanism is pretty long, especially for some of these keys. As soon as any one of these three get off center, should they get bent, as soon as that happens, you're not going to be able to play the saxophone uh, really very well. A lot of notes won't come out and there's going to be a lot of squeaks and squawks. If you notice that you have a lot of squeaks and squawks and the octave key is fine, best check these palm keys. A lot of times there will be sections of them to where they get bent. This key loves to get bent and they all love to get bent off to the side. Watch out for those when you're taking a look at your saxophone and make sure that they're sealing as designed. They're closed key, meaning that the spring will keep them closed when you let go, unlike 
the open keys. So there, there's no reason why they would just do this on themselves. So double check for any bending that's going on inside them. You ever have that problem where the low C plays, but the C sharp, the B, and the B flat will not come out whatsoever? Many times people will think, well, then the problem is with the C sharp, the B, and the B flat key, or that there might be a leak in the C or the E flat. In this case, I'm going to show you what what it actually is, and it really evolves and stems the problem comes from here. Not only for the low B, B flat and the C sharp, but also for our B flat. If we're doing a one and one B flat, and you notice this sound, then there's a problem with our regulation screw. And we're going to go over that right now. The B flat, B, and low C sharp key each of the finger keys are hooked up to our G-sharp key right here that you see moving. Whenever we finger those low notes, naturally we're going three, one, two, three here, are our low C, and then as soon as we press either C-sharp, B, or B-flat, that will actually potentially raise that G-sharp key for no good reason. The G-sharp key is the geographical center of the saxophone. If you have a leak there, you will not be able to play any of these low notes. It's a very simple adjustment. What you're going to use is a good medium sized small screwdriver. And we're going to first go to G sharp, or you can press C sharp, B, or B flat. Either will be able to help you indicate just how high this G sharp key is going. I like to use the G sharp key, it's right there. And if you notice, there's a little give in between the end and the tip of this screw and that actual key. So we're going to hold down the G-sharp key and hold down the F and slowly screw in the key until you see that it won't come, to, come down anymore. So we still have some more screwing in there. That's all right. What you don't want to do is over screw and try and force the key to stop because then you'll end up damaging the arm, bending our F sharp and our F key out of regulation whack. And we just have just a little more to go. I always like going by quarter turns. It's just a little more. And voila. We want to make sure after we do that, that we check to make sure that F, E, and low D comes out and that there isn't an over-regulation problem causing the F sharp not to go down. If there is and you have problems playing E or F after that, simply back the screw up just by an eighth of a turn until all the notes come out. As far as for the B flat, which is up here, you notice even though I'm putting the key down, there's still a little bounce right there. So when we go back to our B flat screw, here's the lever arm that controls the, our B flat. Again, controlled by F and this regulation screw, we have a little movement there. It's just a simple matter of screwing it down until the key goes down and won't go down anymore without over-regulating, naturally causing more problems with the F sharp and the F. After double checking everything, we should have, have no problems with a B flat one and one fingering or a low B flat B or C sharp. We're going to start with the B flat. Okay, we have no problem with that. Now let's check our lower octave to make sure and see if we adjusted that G sharp key just right. I like to start with G, move to F, E, and D, just to make sure that we didn't over-regulate. So we're down to C, and now let's see if the C sharp, the B, and the B flat will play. I also
also like to check with the subtone. So we have that going on. We sounds like everything working between the C sharp, B, and B flat in the lower octave. We got that regulated up, and now we have the B flat also regulated for our alternate fingering. By the time you get all these done, you should have a saxophone if that was the problem. You should have a saxophone that will be able to play and function the way it was designed. <laughs> So join us next time as we continue our video series on preventative maintenance checks and services for musical instruments. And remember, if you're fighting with your instrument, you're going to lose every time. This is Anson Co. at the swingiest repair shop in Las Vegas, located at Family Music Centers.